Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the course introduction for the OpenHPI course Parallel Programming Concepts. My name is Peter Tröger and I'm a senior researcher at the Hasso Plattner Institute in Potsdam. Today I want to give you a short introduction about the content of the course so that you can decide if this course is interesting for you or not. What is the problem? Why do we talk about parallel programming and parallel programming concepts? When we look on today's computer markets, we have the situation that basically three classes of computer markets can be distinguished. The first class is embedded and mobile computing. Embedded and mobile computing relates to a broader range of devices such as smartphones, but also a traditional class of hardware devices such as medical devices, things that are built into cars, smartphones, and these kind of things. So the point with embedded and mobile computing is that the most crucial factor there is the power consumption for a particular feature. So if you have such a device, like a handy, like a smartphone, um, you have the problem that if you add more performance to the device, if you want to have better and faster software, you also have to invest more battery capacity, more power, um, in order to achieve your performance goal. A second relevant factor in this computer market is something that is called real-time behavior, where you have to hold specific deadlines or the overall price. The second big class of computer market um, is desktop computing, a classical area which relates to desktop PCs, home PCs, but also workstations, where the most relevant aspect is the price per performance. Um, so the idea here is that you get the best possible performance for the lowest price. This is what an ordinary end customer is interested in. The third big class of um, computer markets is server computing. In server computing, you have high-end machines computing large workloads for business cases. So typically in these environments, you want to achieve a particular business goal and want to um, reach your business goal by having the maximum performance for your application. When we look into the situation, we, it turns out that most software, regardless of the computer market, can benefit from, benefit from better performance. So whatever you do in order to increase the performance of your software, make it faster or let it compute more data, um, makes your actual target market a better thing. And the computer hardware industry got used to this fact and delivered constantly new hardware like GPU hardware, modern processors, but also embedded hardware in order to deal with that issue. Some examples for these cases. Um, when we look on the recent announcement of the new iPhone by the company Apple, we saw that um, a part of this new phone is a new processor, the A7, which is a 64-bit processor with two cores and over one billion transistors inside. And with this kind of hardware capability, Apple is now able to offer sophisticated features and new software um, features like, for example, 3D exploration of locations and different places on the Earth. So this is one example where the mobile and emb embedded world can benefit from better hardware in order to deliver more um, impressive and powerful and featureful software. Another example is computer games. Computer games is a classical example for how parallel hardware or better hardware can help to make the customer more happy. Um, computer gamers are people we, um, who really like to use new graphic cards, um, additional CPU, horsepower, more RAM capacity in order to get a better gaming experience. Here you see an example from um, one of the more modern computer games. Um, when we go further into the server market where we have business cases to fulfill, um, we have a big new hype term which is called big data. And big data is about the question of how to process large amounts of data, customer data, um, but also data from the ongoing business process in order to get new results, new um, ideas about your customer behavior, and at the end to create new revenue streams. Um, commonly known examples are companies such as Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Amazon is also doing a lot of big data um, applications in their end user experience. So here we see that the software running on the server side, again, has improved capabilities and offers you improved possibilities by running faster, by processing more data. So the common idea of speed up, of running software in a more efficient way, can be found regardless of the different markets that we look into. Um, more examples would be, um, for example, from the scientific domain. In the scientific domain, when we look into natural sciences, there is um, 
biology and medicine research where ideas such as DNA sequencing truly benefit from improving hardware, from faster processing speeds and the additional capabilities you get from these different features. Um, another example that is well known in practice is weather prediction. Weather prediction is a classical compute intensive problem where the increasing capabilities of hardware give you the chance to get more accurate predictions and to um, cover a wider space of atmospheric options and um, properties you want to analyze. So in sum, when we take the IT industry into different markets we have there, it turns out that um, everywhere faster processing, larger data sets, faster computation is an interesting issue. So the question is, how do you achieve that? How do you get your software to run faster, to run better or at a larger scale? And this basically boils down to the question of how software looks like. When we look on a typical application, um, the very underlying foundational concept of running a piece of software is that you have a set of instructions. There's a set of instructions sequentially executed and the processor has the responsibility to take all these instructions, to process them and to deliver the according result. If we now want to make that faster, if we want to have an application, a piece of software that can run these instructions in a faster way, the question is, how can you achieve that? And parallel computing and parallel programming is one of the possibilities you have um, to actually let your software run faster or to let your software process more data. And this idea of using parallelism as a strategy for speed up and scale up this is nothing new. This is something we know in the IT industry and also in computer science research from the very beginning. It's also something that is known from other fields that are not IT related, such as car construction um, or any kind of manufacturing um, step. So the basic idea is easy to understand and it's immediate, immediately grabbable that doing things in parallel, running software in a parallel fashion is a good thing for getting it better. The problem is that Due to the lately um, raising importance of this issue, we are now facing a situation where tons of options, languages, toolkits, and other stuff is popping up, and we need to understand how to rank these technologies, how to rank parallel programming languages, how to rank toolkits, how to rank parallel hardware of different kinds. And the idea of this Open HPI course is to give you a first glimpse and the first possibility to understand the area of possibilities. So what we will try to do in this course is to, is to give you an overview of how parallel programming and parallel systems look like and what kind of options you have if you enter this area of IT industry and computer science research. Um, just to show you one simple example for how the situation is today. When you take different terms that um, can be seen in Google searches or in articles and books, then you end up with a lot of different terminology. Some of them are old and very well known in computer science. Some of them are very new, newly introduced by different trends in parallelization. So we come into the situation that the whole game of parallel programming and parallel systems becomes very complicated, crowded, and, um, there's, and crowded now, there's a lot of buzzwords in there, and you somehow need a way to dig through this mess of terminology and wording. So this course um, has the intention or the goal to give you an overview about parallel and concurrent systems, um, both regarding to hardware and software. So what we will try to do is to give you a guide through this jungle of um, concepts, terminology, and ideas, in the parallel landscape in order to have a chance to rank if a particular solution is suitable for your problem or not. So if you're interested in this course, then um, it will be helpful if you have a very small set of um, preconditions being fulfilled. So um, one of these things is that it will be very helpful if you have some skills in any kind of programming language. This hasn't to be a parallel programming language any traditional um, language or modern programming language is good enough. Um, if you have no skills at all in software development, the course may be a little bit too fast for you in terms of knowledge transfer. The second thing is um, this course basically deals with an overview of a lot of concepts. What we will not do is to dig into one specific approach such as OpenMP or OpenCL 
to all, in all the details. We will cover them and we will discuss how to rank them in the landscape of parallel approaches, but we will not have the time to dig deeper into any of these approaches. Um, we will give you additional reading materials and hints how to continue to your learning process, but if your main interest is in learning one of these technologies in detail, then um, it may be suitable to add other sources also to this course. Um, the third thing is, we will also not discuss specific parallelization problems in details. What do I mean by this? Um, the typical situation in IT industry is that you have a particular product with a particular algorithm, and at one point in this product, you want to gain some speed up. So you have a very specific parallelization problem in one specific part of the system. This is something where we also will not have the time to talk about because there's a variety of problems in this area. What we will try to do is to give you general hints um, of how to approach a parallelization problem, common methodologies and strategies, also design patterns that may help you to find the solution by yourself. So this course truly serves as an overview and as a guide through parallel programming and parallel system concepts and um, any kind of extended knowledge then may be part of other courses. Okay, so if you now think that this is something interesting for you and this Open HBI course can give you some benefit, here's the course organization scheme. The course organization scheme follows the typical Open HBI pattern. This is that you have six lecture weeks and an additional seventh exam week. Um, everything is free of charge, so you don't have to pay either for the courses or for the examination. In each of the lecture weeks, you get a couple of videos, short videos, with attached self-tests, so you can testify yourself and see if you got the content correctly. And at the end of the week, you will have a homework assignment where you have a graded um, evaluation um, of the things you have learned in this week. This happens six times for the six weeks of content delivery, and in the seventh week, we have a graded exam. Um, if you get at least 50% of the points in the assignments and the exam, you will be awarded an OpenHBI certificate. Um, the OpenHBI forums can be used for discussions between the participants. You will have a chance to exchange your problems and ideas with both the other participants and our teaching team. And the currently um, expected starting point for this course is end of January in 2014. Here's the course organization in terms of topics. So what will be the schedule we were facing? Um, in week one, we will talk about terminology and fundamental concepts. There are several things in there that are well known from both um, industry literature, industry related literature and academic research literature. And this somehow makes sure that everybody gets the same understanding of the problem domain. So we will talk about fundamental laws such as Moore's law, Amdahl's law, or Gustafsson's law. And we will also talk about the rising um, appearance of multi-core and many-core architectures and where this actually rise from, from a hardware perspective comes from. This relates to a problem that is called power wall and memory wall and we will discuss in week one what these walls are, what these problems are and how they are tackled currently by the hardware industry. In the second week we move then to the first big class of parallel systems and parallel programming paradigms which is the so-called shared memory parallelism. In week two, we first talk about the basics, which is the underlying problems every programming language and every approach has that deals with shared memory parallelism. This is stuff like concurrency, race conditions, semaphores, and mutexes, and is closely related to operating system concepts. Um, in the third week, we then move forward to shared memory parallelism from the perspective of the software developer. This is the point in time where we will cover different existing toolkits and languages in an overview fashion and try to categorize them and rank them according to their appropriateness for particular parallelization problems. Then in four, uh, week four, we continue with a very special kind of hardware, which is the so-called accelerators, sometimes um, also known as GPU hardware. And here we want to again uh, check whether this kind of hardware is feasible for a particular problem domain, what kind of things is available in the field, what is the programming model there, and how do we expect these things to evolve in the future in order to give you the chance to understand if this kind of parallel hardware and parallel execution environment is suitable for your problem. 
In week five, we then move to distributed memory parallelism, which is a distinguished class from shared memory parallelism. This is an area where we will talk about cluster computing, a little bit about high performance computing ideas, and the um, most fundamental programming models, um, for example, the message passing interface MPI. In week six, then, we wrap up the course with a couple of collected patterns and best practices for parallel software development, which both arise from the literature and from experience, experiences that we made here um, with our research work on parallel systems. And this somehow gives you a wrap up of all the different concepts we learned about in hardware and software during the course. The teaching team, so we will have um, three main persons being involved. This is me, um, Peter Trüger, and then we have Frank Feinbuber and Fahad Khalid. And they will help you in the discussion forums with specific answers to your questions and will also guide you through the whole course organization. So that was everything I wanted to talk about today. You're more than invited to join the course. We will be happy to see you there. And um, hopefully we will have a nice and interesting discussion with you um, about the topic of parallel programming concepts. Thanks.